Good morning, everyone. How are y'all doing today? It's all blurry now again. One of you guys will have to let me know if it's blurry on on your um on your end now. It was really nice when I first opened it up, but then when I click on uh, start live video, it gets all all blurry like this. But anyway, I hope you can hear me because that's a major thing. Anyway, so. I uh, hope y'all are doing well, TGIF, uh, kind of cloudy, got a tad bit of rain last night, a lot of fog this morning, uh, Darren's on the road delivering a piece of farm equipment down to South Dakota, so it's just me and the puppies. Uh, so God bless our farm and God bless you guys wherever you are today, and thanks for watching, thanks for watching. So we um, we have a lot of prayer requests um, this morning, um, some that you may know, some that you may not know. But uh, first of all, um, prayers go out to the um, Karen Zach family. She was a Johnson that lived up um, in the Wahala area there. And um, they are moving, she had passed away a, a while ago, and they're moving ahead. Uh, with uh, the funeral well not a while ago but last week and and so that's going to be um, the uh, September 8th at 10 30 at Wahala Lutheran but um, please please pray for the family there so um, prayers for Janet LaTexture she's moving um, ahead with surgery I can't remember if it's hip or knee um, but uh, please pray for Janet and a quick recovery and for her medical team. Um, prayers for Naomi Mahler, um, as um, it's a friend of a friend um, that requested prayers as her cancer has returned um, in her abdomen. And it is treatable, but not curable. So please pray for everyone involved there. Um, prayers go out to the Hawaii folks suffering that terrible, terrible fire over there. Oh my goodness, have we had fires, um, Canada, now Hawaii, um, uh, just please keep all of them in your prayers and <clears throat> remember, uh, what I said is you are enough and, um, so if you find, um, a legit, um, site to donate to, make sure it's legit, check it out. Um, we, we can help maybe um, with some kind of donations or something like that. There's been a lot of lives lost and um, et cetera down there. It's just horrible. Um, prayers for Carol Borgen's granddaughter. Um, as uh, she put it, Sky Zone got the best of her and um, broke her leg. Uh, so please keep her in your prayers. She's a trooper, though. I've seen her with a smile on her face. And also on the, the same note there, um, prayers from uh, Mav Skitlin, who broke his collarbone. I believe it was on a, a four-wheeler or something like that. Um, and again, he's, he's a trooper. Um, he is not um, um, in a cast, but he's wearing a, a sling, a sling. So... Um, prayers go out to my friend from back home, Abby Zilstra, um, had the weirdest thing happen to her back home. Um, she was driving and somebody threw themselves in front of her and she hit them. Um, the, the guy that ran out there, um, did not pass away, but can you imagine how horrible, um, that was for her, and I'm guessing she might have even had the kids with her. Um, so please pray for Abby. Um, let's see. It's an act of kindness, act of kindness, act of kindness. Okay. Um, prayers for my friend Sandy. Um, I call her at least every other day. Um, and she actually had to go into the ER last night. Um, as she just would not wake up and and when they finally got her woke up she was just kind of lethargic um, so they brought her in and and I don't know it doesn't sound like they really figured anything out um, but she's back home now um, Sandy and Ray are just really really struggling and could really use your prayers on that 
Um, so for our acts of kindness, uh, I'm not supposed to say any names here, um, but a friend um, of a friend who had fell off the roof, um, Jerry Gimsey um, built a ramp um, for his friend before he got home from the hospital so that he could get in and out of the house uh, very easily. So God bless you. And then um, his son and um, a friend um, put in a stair lift. Um, you know those those ones that take you up, up the stairs there? Um, they installed that and got that all ready for him when he came home from the hospital too. So thanks a lot, guys, and God bless you. Um, and, um, here is, um, another one on a different level. Um, but, um, a friend of mine, <laughs> I don't know how to put this, but as you guys know, um, marijuana is now legal in, um, Minnesota. And, um, anyway, um, a friend... It's actually, I don't know, to me kind of funny, but she had good intentions. Um, a friend has not been doing that good, lots of aches and pains. And um, a friend offered them some marijuana to make them feel better. <laughs> and so that was shared with me. And, and uh, of course, they said, what an act of kindness. And I said, I'm going to share that. And she goes, don't say any names. <laughs> But anyway, you know, hey, to each their own, I guess, right? <laughs> um, and <clears throat> let's see here now. I have some acts of kindness. Um, a grandma runs a nonprofit group called Caring for Kids in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And her and her friends in her group make quilts for children in the ICU. Isn't that awesome? Quilts can just be used everywhere. If any of you guys make quilts and you're finding out that um, you can't think of anywhere to bring them, um, the ambulance lots of times will need them at the scenes of accidents. Um, and if any of you guys ever have any, you know, older quilts or blankets or whatever around the house, sometimes we just accumulate so many. Um, the uh, the um, veterinarians need them um, for when they put the pets in um, the kennels, you know. Um, so just a couple places. Um, I've actually done both. So, um, oh, Carol Borgen shared um, that um, people have been dropping off get well wishes for her granddaughter. Um, and I see flowers and some kids colored or get well cards and there's some gift bags and balloons and all kinds of stuff. So, um, that has got to make the gal feel a little bit better. Um, let's see here. Um, I think that is, oh, one more act of kindness. Um, I have some of my parishioners. Um, at my new church, we're all getting together tomorrow to help me put up a fence in the backyard for the dogs. And so this will allow me to um, be up that way a lot more too. And so um, I just thank them for helping me out on that. Okay, so I think with that, it's time for a prayer. Dear Father in heaven, how we love you. How you love us a new day unfolds and we desire that it is just filled and infused with our worship of you as we turn our eyes on the beauty of you so our spirits lift and find peace please pour out your spirit upon all of us today so that we can worship in new and fresh ways amen i like that one that's that's a good one Okay, guys, so today we're going to do something a little bit different. <clears throat> um, I visited this before. I never, you know, paid too much attention to it except for in Scripture. 
But my aunt actually asked me a question um, about speaking in tongues. And I think, um, you know, since it isn't like super common in our day, we sometimes, you know, wonder about this. And so I've printed some scriptures along with some information that I've found. Um, and so I'm going to kind of take this slow and go back and forth to scriptures after I let my dog out. I knew he would do this. There you go. Okay, one down, two more here, just waiting. So um, what is the gift of speaking in tongues? Have you guys ever heard of that? Um, so the first occurrence of speaking in tongues occurred on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2, 1 through 4. So I'm going to read that for you. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Okay, so still, what, what does that mean, speak in other tongues? So, speaking um, in other tongues um, is, okay, so the, the Greek word translated tongues literally means languages. And so, therefore, the gift of speaking in tongues is speaking in a language that the speaker has never learned in order to minister to someone who does speak that language, okay? Um, I'm going to repeat that. The gift of, of tongues is speaking in a language the speaker has never learned in order to minister, to share the word of the Lord to someone who does speak that language. Interesting, huh? And so... It refers to Acts 2, verse 11. Um, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Hmm. So then, um, in 1 Corinthians chapters 12 through 14, I'm not going to read um, both uh, all of those chapters. We'll go through the scriptures. But um, Paul, your friend and mine, discuss, discusses miraculous gifts, saying, Now, brothers, if I come to, to you and speak in tongues, what good will I be to you? unless I bring you some revelation of knowledge or prophecy or word of instruction. So that is 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 6. Okay. I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, but I would rather have you prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues, unless someone interprets so that the church may be edified. Okay, so we're going to talk about that too, because oftentimes, um, back in, in, in Jesus' time, um, they would also have an interpreter because it, it wouldn't necessarily be a one-on-one -on -one conversation of the one speaking in tongues um, in the language of the one that's listening. It would be a whole group. And so what Paul is saying is that, you know, um, when I speak in tongues, you know, we all need to understand and, and learn something. So therefore... He would have one or possibly two interpreters, or anybody who spoke in tongues would have interpreters. And so, um, let's see, okay. 
So, according to the Apostle Paul, and in agreement with the tongues described in Acts, speaking in tongues is valuable to the one hearing God's message in his or her own language. But it is useless to everyone else unless it is interpreted and translated. Okay? So a person with the gift of interpreting tongues could understand what a tongues speaker was saying, even though he did not know the language being spoken. So they refer to this in um, 1 Corinthians 12, um, verse 30. So let me find that. 12, verse 30. Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. So they want to make sure that it's interpreted so people can understand. Now the tongues interpreter then would then communicate the message of the tongues speaker to everyone else so all could understand. For this reason, any but anyone who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret what he says. First um, Corinthians 14 verse 13. For this reason, the one who speaks in a tongue should pray that they may interpret what they say. So a person speaking in tongues wants to make sure that everyone he's speaking to can understand it. Okay. So Paul's conclusion regarding tongues that were not interpreted is powerful. I love this. Love this. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 19. But in the church, I would rather speak five intelligible words to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue that are not understood. Absolutely. So a lot of people wonder, um, as I did as well, because I remember a long time ago, um, I think it was my aunt that was telling me that her and her group of ladies spoke in tongues. And so we wonder, is the gift of tongues for today, okay? Is it still kind of going on, this gift from the Holy Spirit? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8 mentions the gift of tongues seizing although it connects the seizing with the arrival of the perfect in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 10. So let's take a, a, a peek at that there. Okay. Um, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. Okay. Um, so while a possible, wait a minute, let's see, okay, wait a minute, no, back up, okay. So some point to a difference in the tense of the Greek verbs referring to uh, prophecy and knowledge seizing and that of tongues being ceased as evidence for tongue seizing before the arrival of the perfect. Now, while a possible interpretation, this is not explicitly clear from the text. So some also point to passages such as Isaiah 28, um, verse 11. And I have that here. Very well then, with foreign lips and strange tongues, God will speak to these people. And then Joel 2, 28 and 29. And afterwards, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Talking about the, the, the Holy Spirit pouring out this gift. Um. 
let's see um okay so in that they're talking about that speaking in tongues was a sign of god's oncoming judgment okay first corinthians 14 22 describes tongues as a sign to unbelievers okay so 14 22 back here okay four wait yeah 14 okay 22 22 22 22 Hang on, I screwed up my papers here. Six. There we go. Okay. Um, tongues, then, are a sign, not for believers, but for unbelievers. Prophecy, however, is not for unbelievers, but for believers. Okay, so that's, that is uh, what is saying there in that verse. Okay. Um, so using this verse, cessational, um, cessationalists, I think that's how you pronounce it, they argue that the gift of tongues was a warning to the Jews that God was going to judge Israel for rejecting Jesus Christ as the Messiah. So therefore, when God did in fact judge Israel with the destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans in AD 70, the gift of tongues no longer served its intended purpose. Now this view is also possible but the primary purpose of tongues being fulfilled does not necessarily demand the gift's cessation to be seized. <clears throat> Scripture does not conclusively assert that the gift of speaking excuse me, in tongues has ceased. So at the same time, if the gift of speaking in tongues Oh my gosh, you guys, hang on. At the same time, if the gift of speaking in tongues were active in the church today, it would be performed in agreement with Scripture. It would be a real and intelligible language. It would be for the purpose of communicating God's Word with a person of another language. It would be exercised in the church in agreement with the command God gave through Paul. If anyone speaks in a tongue, two or at the most three should speak, one at a time, and someone must interpret. If there is no interpreter, the speaker should keep quiet in the church and speak to himself and God. It would also be in accordance in accordance with 1 Corinthians 14 verse 33. Okay. Let's pull that up. 14 33. Okay. For God is not a God of disorder but of peace as in all the congregations of the Lord's people and so God doesn't want someone going out there blurbling out a language that nobody understands when they're speaking the word because it makes absolutely no sense um, for God is not the author of confusion but of peace as in all churches of the saints so now God can definitely give a person the gift of speaking in tongues to enable him or her to communicate with, an, with a person who speaks another language. However, the Holy Spirit is self-governing in the distribution of the spiritual gifts. And that um, 
tells us that in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 11. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. So just imagine how much more productive missionaries, for instance, could be if they did not have to go to language school and were instantly able to speak the, the, um, to people in their own language. But however, God does not seem to be doing this. Tongues does not seem to occur today in the manner that it did in the New Testament. Uh, I've got a fly here. Um, despite the fact that it would be immensely useful. Now, the majority of believers, hang on, I'm on a mission. Got him. The majority of believers who claim to practice a gift of speaking in tongues do not do so in the agreement with the scriptures mentioned above that we just talked about. These facts lead to the conclusion that the gift of tongues has ceased or is at least a rarity in God's plan for the church today. Okay. So that is what I have regarding the gift of speaking in tongues. I personally have never heard anybody speak in tongues. I don't know if you guys have or not. Um, but as it said, you know, the scripture is not completely clear on whether it has um, um, ceased to today. But it does mention that, you know, the people that claim to be speaking in tongues um, do not do it according to scripture. So... I don't know. Take it for what it's worth. Interesting. So with that, let us all join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Um, and so um, with that, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord look upon each and every one of you in this whole entire world with his favor and give us all his amazing peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So thanks for joining me again, you guys. I truly appreciate it. Um, I hope this might lead you into maybe a little bit more research on speaking in tongues if, if you think it's interesting. But... Um, let me look. Monday, Monday, Monday. Um, hang on one second. Let me see. I've got a whole bunch of stuff written on there, but I don't know if it's for me or you. So. Okay, I should be good for Monday. Because Darren has a dentist appointment and I have a couple meetings in the evening so we are good so have a great weekend you guys um and until monday god bless and bye for now